Hi, I wanted to share some information that I had uh, from a recent meeting with Cheryl Siebel from OTS on the systems and processes that are involved with uh, registering non-credit courses uh, into uh, or linking those non-credit courses um, into systems that we have here at the World Campus. And um, she started off with the relationship between NCRR and SOAR. And NCRR stands for the Non-Credit Records and Registration uh, Database or System. And from what I understand, um, it's a little hard to see, but off the edge of the screen on the left-hand side, um, you see part of an R and a D, and that's actually um, the trailing end of an acronym, NCRD. And to be honest, I don't know what that stands for, but the NCRD form is where things get started. And apparently that somehow lists the information for the non-credit course. And that gets sent to the college. Um, again, that's off the edge of the, the screen there. Um, but you do see that sort of yes there. And basically, if the college says yes, then um, what happens is, is that information from the NCRD form uh, then populates into, the, into what's called a course master. Uh, again, I believe that's another system, and the course master creates different sections. So she was using the example of a nursing course, um, and if we had a nursing course of 8,000, that would be listed in the course master, and we might have like section 001 and 002, <clears throat> and those would be, again, held within the course master. The information from the course master goes into populate NCRR, and NCRR links to SOAR information, and I guess it populates uh, overnight what's going on there, so that now SOAR can draw on the related information from NCRR for that Nursing 8000 course. Um, to go back to NCRR a little bit, uh, apparently there is a system called ABTN, and there um, is listed information for uh, <clears throat> something called an open flag, and I guess the open flag somehow activates that course in NCRR, if I'm not mistaken. Um, again, in, in this situation, we've got Vicki Stevens, who I believe was previously with CNI, and she's handling a a lot of the NCRR and SOAR side of, um, of, of this system um, for Penn State Business Solutions. Um, NCRR also handles, uh, I guess, fees associated with this course. And if you look back under the course master, I guess each section has something called A-R-U-O-N-T, and again, I don't know what that stands for. Um, that has to do, I believe, also with uh, finances. So, anyhow, um, what happens is, in this case, we are trying to avoid using ISO, if possible, um, given that in the near future, we'll probably be implementing a totally new infrastructure that's being called 1CE. And uh, Bart Grande was also in the meeting, and he uh, said that one, one of the beautiful things about 1CE is that it'll remove like 75% of all the boxes and relationships we have uh, on the board right now, which you know, again, it has, has some obvious benefits. But any case, anyway, going back to ISO, um, if possible, Cheryl recommended we try and avoid it in this situation. Um, I'm not sure what the thinking is behind whether we need that or not. Apparently, there are four or so categories we can use within ISO. Um, I guess PS1. Uh, a CB 262 or something along that line category, but again, Vicky is going to handle all that stuff. Um, 
And again, NCRR and ISO are being contrasted with ISIS and PACS, which are entirely credit. And that we are not going to be um, touching. PACS will kind of come into the conversation a little later on, but um, for now, uh, again, we're not going to be using those two systems because they're dedicated for credit. So if we need to use ISO, apparently it talks between NCRR and I NSOR. Um, but again, if we can't avoid to avoid it, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. So working in SOAR, SOAR is the actual uh, system that the learner accesses through some kind of marketing web page. And that marketing web page might have something like a click here link um, to register. Um, the learner uses that registration link to enter the SOAR system to find their course that they're looking for. And SOAR, like I, we said before, has information stored about the course itself. And on the back end, it's also linked to a merchant. And in our case, there's actually going to be no fee associated to the learner for taking the courses that we're actually talking about right now. But in general, most of them will have um, a fee that, uh, that is associated with taking the course or registering for the course. And if so, SOAR would link to PSU Pay. Um, which was also called ePay, I believe, on the back end. And PSU Pay has information about um, actually processing credit cards and payments. And that has information about the merchants in there as well. So, going back into SOAR, we have a few resources associated with that. Um, you can go to soar.outreach.psu.edu. Um, as a website for more information and Vicky will eventually send um, a sort of a spreadsheet of information to asksor at outreach.psu.edu and on that chart I don't have that so I'm kind of going off memory here but with things like a schedule number and I think the schedule number comes from NCRR um, the title of the course um, I think there might be contact hours involved on that but ultimately, at the end of that list, there's also an angel or a group ID. And if we look over into angel, which is our learning management system, um, as an instructional designer, that's where I start working, um, you know, creating a course or a group within angel. And primarily, it's going to be a group because groups are the designated sort of category for non-credit or anything that isn't credit I should say you know, so it might be professional development um, programs things like that or for clubs um, so anyhow if I was to create the course and again for this example if it was nursing 8000 um, I would switch to the management tab and find the course ID there Anyhow, that course ID I'd, I will send to Vicki Stevens, and she'll add that to the chart. And once Vicki has all her information, then she'll send it to ask SOAR at outreach.psu.edu. The important part about that is once the SOAR team gets that information, they'll enter in what they need to. And the important part about the course ID is that will set up a link that's referred to as ARG, which is the um, Angel Registration Gateway. And the ARG basically will take the registration information from SOAR and automatically populate that into Angel. The benefit there is, is that the student or the learner, when they enter SOAR, not only will they be selecting their course, selecting their payment, and again in our case it's zero, it'll be free, but they'll also be simultaneously registering for a Friends of Penn State account. The Friends of Penn State account is a separate system that allows uh, basically anyone outside of um, you know, a paying student um, to enter into ANGEL and other 
shibboleth uh, systems. I don't know in part which systems. I believe friends of Penn's data accounts are pretty restricted. For example, folks who get a friends of Penn's data account don't also get a psu.edu email address. They do not get one of those addresses. They're just given access to things like Angel. Anyhow, that registration information, for example, the Friends of Penn State account, would get sent through the ARG into Angel, and in our case, also into a system called Clockwork, which the World Campus Help Desk uses. Um, Janice Gillum and her team handles Clockwork um, at the Help Desk. And by setting up Clockwork, um, what we're able to do is, again, during that uh, moment that the student registers for that course in SOAR, information is sent, register, I'm sorry, permissions, um, registration information is sent into both Angel and Clockwork. And that way the student has access to not only Angel, but um, our course within the uh, World Campus servers because we use um, the service to uh, basically as our CMS content management system. Um, that way the students can both log into Angel and see our course in particular. I believe I've got everything there. Um, Again, it takes, I think, a few folks to make this happen. Obviously, in our case, there are folks from Learning Design, World Campus Learning Design, World Campus Help Desk, um, Program Managers, uh, and in this case, Program Managers, uh, Denise Rill from Penn State Business Solutions, um, uh, someone from Registration, or is going to be handling Registration. Again, in our case, it's Vicki Stevens. Um, we need assistance from the SOAR team uh, at OTS and of course none of this could have happened without um, a really great walkthrough and information from Cheryl Siebel. Um, so if you've got any questions I'm not sure I'm the right person to contact but um, you could ask me. Um, I would probably recommend that you try within your own unit maybe your, your finance um, contact or someone who handles registration and they should probably have a much better idea about running NCRR and SOAR uh, and any of the other systems. So I hope this was useful and um, thank you very much.